All right, I'm going to narrate the assembly process. I don't know if I strictly need to, but uh, just in case we want any B-roll, I'm going to do it. So I've got the iron set at 360 degrees. I've got it nice and clean. And I'm going to start out with a 5.6 volt Zener diode. So I'm going to get this in with the cathode in the correct orientation, uh, press it all the way down so that it's going to be nicely seated. And now I'm going to flip over the board maybe bend the leads out a little bit and I'm gonna start soldering on it. So we'll get this one done now and get that solder fully flowed in. Same for the other side. Wipe the soldering iron to keep it clean and then crop the leads down. Now we'll move on to the next one. So next I'm gonna go with the fuse. So I've got some of these fuses already. And what I'm going to do is just chop the fuse out of its tape there. I'm going to bend the leads on it, flip this over, and the fuse goes in here. So the fuse goes in, flip it over, bend the leads out a little bit, and solder them. We'll do the first and the second, and you really want to let the solder kind of flow in so that you don't have it just sitting on the surface. Chop them off onto the next component. Now we've got the 22 volt zeners. So I believe there are two of those. So I'm gonna pull two out of the bag. Put the bag away, and let's get these installed. So I'm going to bend the leads, and we've got one of them here. Make sure the cathode is facing the right way, and we've got another one. Let me bend the leads on this. Another one up here. So bend the leads on that one as well. Flip it over, per usual, apply the solder. Sometimes it's a little bit tricky, especially with these bigger grounded sides of these things. You gotta let the heat soak in. We'll do the same over here. And the last one there. Crop the leads. Sometimes leads get a little bit hot, but usually it's not a big problem. On to the next component. So next up, I'm gonna go in and do the capacitors. So there are lots of these. These are 100 nanofarads. And I believe there are 11, something like that. I think that'll be enough. I'll come back for more if I need more. So I'm going to start sticking these in where they go. So we've got one there. And the same thing, I'm just going to bend the leads slightly so that they hold themselves in position. And keep going. This one. And 100 nano there. And those are 10 nanos. So we need another 100 here. And 100 nano there. 100 nano there. I think we're getting close to having all the hundreds. These are all tens. So I think that's all of them for now. So I'll put the rest of these back in the bag for now. And we'll solder these hundreds up.
I like to drag the iron up the lead to pull away any excess solder. It makes it look neater and it ensures it leaves behind a solid bond that you can visually check. Clean the iron, crop off the leads. I think that's all of them. Now I'm gonna go and get some 10 nanos. I'll be right back. These are now 10 nanofarads. You can see 10 nano. I believe there are four of them. So I'll do the same process there. Flip it over. Should do it on those. Ten nanos are now on. On to the next part. One K resistors. A lot of these. I think this is the most populous component on this board. Let's get a bunch of these off here. I'll come back for more as I need them. But pretty much this entire row is all 1Ks. 1Ks, 1Ks. So let's go.
I'm going to go on the back and solder them all up. Clean the iron off and crop the leads. Now we still have some more one case to do. We still got to get the rest of these and the rest of these. There's also a couple there. A few more. I will solder the backs. Go ahead and crop those leads to get more room for the others.
I should be able to crop these off now. should be all the 1Ks done, so let's go on to our next resistor value. So our next resistor value is 470. So I believe there are 1, 2, 3, 4 of those. Solder those on now. Four seventies are done. Let's go to the next value. Hundred ohm. These are for the gate drivers. They reduce ringing on the gates. And I believe we need six of them because we have six MOSFETs. Kind of like to center them a little bit, but it's not absolutely essential. solder these up now. should be good. We'll crop off the leads. All right, so those are done. I believe we still got to do our 3.3 Ks. Those would be these. And I believe there are four of those.
And the function of those resistors is to limit the current from higher voltage signal sources, like the 12 volt referenced point signal, or an auxiliary digital input that might be higher than 5 volts. Those circuits are also decoupled with 10 nanofarad capacitors, and these 3.3Ks offer half of the LC or the RC filter that keeps false triggering from happening. We'll solder these up. Clean the iron, crop the leads, so I believe we are done with resistors at this point. I'm going to put the 100 microfarad caps on, I think they're sitting around here, there's one of them at least. Let's grab the second one. Not sure where the other one went. So the longer lead is typically the positive. We'll use the same on the opposite, the other one. And we'll get those soldered in. this off, chop them, so those are in, I'll just smooth that one out a little bit so it's a little bit more vertical. Maybe do the same with the other, yeah that should be good. All right, let's do some transistors now. So these are the PNP transistors. So these are going to be in here, and then our NPNs will be over there. Need four of these. And just go in like that. Sometimes you got to splay the leads out a little bit. We'll flip them over and solder them. That should be good for the PNPs. Crop the leads off. Now I'll go after the NPNs next. So now I've got NPNs.
similar deal. Those are all in, we'll flip it over and solder them. Clean the iron and crop the leads. transistors or at least BJTs are on. Next up, let's do some Zener diodes. Do four of these. And there are four in the bag, which is perfect. These are 4.7 volt Zeners. They are there to protect the microcontroller inputs on our digital input pins. So these are just going to go in. We have to mind the position of the cathode, make sure it matches what's on the board on the silk screen. Last one is up here. I'm just bending all the leads on these, kind of straightening them out if they're at a weird angle. Now we'll flip them over and solder them. Take the leads. Yeah, that should do it on the uh, Zeners. So next, I'm gonna go with the LEDs. So it's kind of up to you how you do the LEDs, but I did put some suggested colors, blue for spark, yellow for fuel, green for system status, and red for over-rev detection. So we're going to mash those. So I got a couple of blues. Put them like this. Now I, you can check the negative needs to go to the ground plane, so the shorter lead goes to the ground plane. solder those. Crop the leads. Now we'll do the next one. We'll see if we can get a yellow on there. Short end goes to the ground plane, bend the leads, and solder.
Next, I will do the red. That's the red line detect. Now, on the newer version of the PCB, I believe there are two of these. But on this one, there is just one. I'm just now noticing that I need to add an extra 1K resistor for that red line detect LED. I'll do a couple of greens. Those are for system status. Clean the iron, cut these leads off. That should be all the LEDs done. So we got all our LEDs now. Next up, I'm gonna go with the uh, terminal box. You can see I'm kind of working from smallest to biggest components in terms of vertical height, more or less. So there are, let's see, five, six, seven, eight, nine, I believe, of these. That should be enough. And for these, you kind of have to hold them in place with your finger one at a time. Hold it down, flip it over. What I like to do is get a little bit of solder and use the actual spool to hold the solder in place while I tack it. And I'll tack each of these one at a time. And I'll come back for the other sides. So this side is all done. Let me get these other ones. Last one. Now we can go and actually finish these and do them for real, now that we have them tacked in place. So I'll start with these. And I'll get these other ones.
those should be good. Next, I'm going to put the linear regulators on. They go like this. I'll do a similar strategy there where I'm going to just pull off a little bit of solder and use it to tack them. Try to get them as vertical as you can. You can always bend them a little bit later. So now they're tacked. Clean the iron a little. Now I'm going to go through the other pins and finish soldering them. I'll just clean up the tack solders. Now these are kind of prone to bridging, so I'm going to look really closely and make sure none of these are bridged across and they look fine. So now I'm going to crop them. Now the linear regulators are on. So next I'm going to do the, actually going to do these little connectors for the sensors. So you can get these on Amazon, or you can buy the actual connectors, but they're a little bit more expensive and sometimes out of stock if you try to get the actual like DigiKey connectors. These again are pretty similar since you can't really bend the leads on them. You just tack them one at a time. Do the next one, and you can try to make them straight if you want. It's not really, it's more of an aesthetic thing than a performance thing. So they're tacked. I'm going to clean the iron a little, finish up the other pins. Sometimes I'll go back and forth between them to let them cool in between. That way I'm not overheating just one connector. And again, these are pretty prone to bridging, so I'm going to be really careful and look to make sure none of them are bridged, and they all look good. Next, I'm going to probably do the power transistors, the MOSFETs. I call these Bojacks. They're IRFP 460s. By I mean, you can buy them from any company you want. The ones I always end up with are called Bojack transistors. So. And I salvaged a couple off another board, so the way you want is to have the metal tab face the line here so that the gate, drain, and source go to gate, drain, and source. And if they are salvaged, you might have to shove the leads in a little bit. I'm just going to try and, I'm going to do them probably one at a time just to make it as easy as possible. Because they will kind of fall out otherwise. This one's got a ton of extra solder on it. So those are my two uh, salvage units. The rest of these are fresh. So that's kind of the similar deal. You stick it in and tack one. 
and you can do the other two. These take a little longer to solder because they have a lot of heat, a lot of thermal inertia. They carry a lot of heat easily. And I'll come back and do the leads at the end. Make sure we get it in the right way around. That'll kind of self-support there because it's now that we've gotten a couple in, they're kind of standing on the transistors now, so we can use that as support. So I'm just going to go ahead and put the last two in here, like so, and then we'll flip them down, try to get them reasonably level and parallel. Then we'll do the same thing, we'll tack each one in. Oh, see, that one moved a little bit. I'm going to just move that back. And I'll get the rest of them here. The rest of the pins, rather. Yeah, these have a lot of thermal mass. These things soak it, which is why they work well. They take a lot of heat, a lot of avalanche power. And you certainly need avalanche power in a spark ignition coil system. So we'll cut the leads now. There we go. That's all our power MOSFETs. So they're all pretty well lined up. Might just adjust the angle a little bit. So now we're down to just a couple of uh, headers. Now I'm going to clean that one up a little bit so it seemed to kind of rotate itself there so let me just make sure it's a little straighter looking. I'm going to wet that with solder and just kind of heat up all of those. And I'm going to actually get a little bit of desoldering wick and just clean any excess up there. just to make sure they're not bridged. And they are not, so that should be good. So now we gotta get these and these. You can buy huge bags of these headers. And I will start off with kind of the low hanging fruit here. So I'm gonna just crop off four individuals here. Sometimes they go flying. Don't worry if they do, you just stick it another. And what I'm going to do is actually take the converter and I'm going to first set the pins into the holes like so. And once the pins are in the holes, I'm going to make sure I get the in and the out correctly. I'm going to try to land the converter on the pins. Now those two did not make it, so I'm just going to give them a little adjustment. And even use one of the old cutoff wires as an adjuster. There, so now we got all four aligned. Now first I'm going to solder them onto the converter. And then once the solder has a little bit of time to cool, I can now flip the board over and holding the converter in place I can now solder the bottom ones like so. So now that those have been soldered, I can do the other corners. And 
and that should do it. So now the converter is on. Now we're going to do these. Similar deal. This stuff comes in big long strips. Sometimes the nanos come with these things. But more often than not, you can just get some like this. Count the number you need. And cut it. Make sure if the last one falls out like this, that it doesn't take one of your units, but that is fine. You want to be sure you always have enough. You don't miss a pin. So the rest of that will be waste. This was our fitted unit. So I'm going to just go ahead and tack those. Actually, before I tack those, I'm actually going to put them on the microcontroller so that we can use it as a guide. And this is going to make it fit a little bit better. Just kind of press it in. Might have to bend it back and forth a little. And then we can flip it over. Now, all I'm going to do initially is just tack the corners because I'm going to come back and solder a bunch of these. So once you've got them tacked, I'm going to do the other. this and that should be enough yep so same deal I'm gonna stick them on our nano oops one of them just fell out that's no good so that one just fell out, so that's not, not going to fly. I'm going to have to cut another one. I suspect this should be good. Yep, that'll be good. Put that one on there. That one on there. Make sure we're not bending our Faraday cage too much. Stick the nano in, wiggle it around till it plugs, flip it over, and get the corners. Make sure we support the nano so it's fully seated. Now we're going to go along these. You want to have a very clean soldering iron for this. But what you want to do is just kind of go one by one and just get it wet with solder and make sure it soaks into the hole. You don't want to have so much that it bridges any of the two pins. And you want to go back and check for any dry solder joints. You don't want any where the solder is just sitting there, not bonding the metal. Do the same on the opposite side. I'm actually going to clean the iron just to keep it from gooping up too much. And I'm going to now just keep going, keeping my eyes open for bridges. So that's one down. Now we're going to do the other, uh, the other one.
clean the iron again. Now this will be the last one, last row. And that should do it on the nanos. So the nanos are already mounted up there. Now, if you ever need to take one out, you can see you can unplug it and then plug it back in as needed. That way they can be easily replaced. Now there's one final thing that these boards do have. Since they are single-sided boards, there are a couple of cheats. It's marked as wire. You can get any piece of cut off conductor or leftover material you want, doesn't matter. You can even use actual insulated wire if you want, but you wanna just bridge anything on these boards that says wire with a piece of wire. Basically, that's just a way of jumping over a trace on the board that otherwise would have been very circuitous or even impossible to get with just single-sided copper. So you'll see this is just making that jump over this trace there. And as with any component, we can crop the leads off now that we're done. So there it is. Now we've got the board fully populated, and I believe we have all of our components satisfied there.